Amen. Let me greet you in Jesus' name, and let me say good morning to all of you. The blessings of God be upon you. Good morning. Amen. It's just a blessing to be here. It's an honor to be here. I thank God for this opportunity. I thank God for your pastor and his heart, uh, Pastor Jason. I thank God for you, uh, Glen Poole First Baptist Church, for uh, accepting my wife and I with open warm arms. It's just a blessing as we come together as saints of God to worship and praise his name. He's a wonderful God and he's worthy to be praised. Uh, our God is good all the time and all the time our God is good. And so we just give God much praise for being such an awesome God he is. Um, this is a wonderful thing. Now what Pastor Jason did not tell me, he did not share with me, my, w- <laughs> my wife and I feel overdressed. And <laughs> And um, uh, he and I spoke about so many things, and he, he didn't say, well, well, Emmanuel, let me just share with you that uh, we, we're very laid back, which is awesome, uh, very casual, and, um, and my wife and I could have definitely blended in with the casual dress. <laughs> uh, but, um, but we're so glad to be here. We are, we're, we're, we're delighted to be here. We, it's, it's a blessing to see what God is doing in the body of Christ, uh, in the church, uh, among pastors, with the saints of God, um, it's just a blessing um, because God is so good, and and I, you know, I think Pastor Jason and I have the same heart that um, if we can't get it right down here, there's no need for us to talk about going up there, and so it's just a blessing that we can come together as sisters and brothers in Christ because that's what you are. You are our sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus. And so we indeed thank God for that. Uh, my wife, uh, Yvette, and I, we, uh, uh, Yvette, just stand and wave. Uh, uh, Michelle, uh, Yvette, I was telling Jason, I said, if, if someone calls my wife Yvette, uh, it's a business relationship. If they call her Michelle, it's a personal relationship. Um, but uh, Michelle, would you stand and just wave your hand at everyone? Amen. And... Uh, And so certainly we're just delighted to be here. Let me give reverence to God and to his son Jesus and to the Holy Spirit and give honor to the great man of God, the pastor that stands in this poor pit Sunday after Sunday as well as through the week, uh, giving you and claiming the the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, I want to give honor to the great deacons here at this church. Uh, The praise and worship team did an awesome job. Uh, The youth pastor and all of you God's children, indeed, it's a blessing to be here. Um, I told um, Pastor Jason, I said, now in my church, um, because he was sharing with me what time you guys normally get out. Of course, you guys start a little earlier than we do. We start at 11 a.m. You guys start at uh, 10.45 a.m. And I shared with uh, uh, Pastor Jason, I said, well, well, man, I said, um, I hope your people don't kick me out the church, man. I may get them out of there by 3 (laughs) p.m. To get you guys to laugh. I won't have you here that long. (laughs) But... um, and um, I said, man, my people are going to be delighted to have you there, especially if you get them out of there at 12.30 or 12 o'clock. But we do start later. Um, but look, there's an there's a awesome word from the Lord this morning. Now, I, I normally, um, uh, when I preach, and it's just, uh, and just so you would know, I've been pastoring now for 18 years. Um, normally when I preach, I, I, I always have the, the members engaged back with me. I'll tell your neighbor so-and-so. Say this to your neighbor, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I, I was sharing with um, Pastor Jason. I said, you know, I'm, I'm normally one of those talk back to me kind of preacher. He said, well, if you get them to talk, Doc, you're, you're all right with me. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, so I'm not going to push you. Amen. I just, um, uh, we just go with the word of God. But um, that is a word from the Lord this morning in the um, New Testament in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. That is an inspired word uh, from the Lord this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And when every heart has found it, if you would just kindly say amen and we'll give you time to get there we want everyone to read the words of uh, the word of God for yourself so uh, we certainly want you uh, to get there 
Um, now, I don't know if you guys normally stand for the reading of the word. I know we do. Um, don't want to put any pressure on you to do so. Uh, we just stand out of reverence to God uh, when the word of God is being read. And so, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 uh, would be my key verse. And, um, and it reads to us this morning, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us, I love that conjunction there. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. And I want to just use for a brief subject, I will try not to be very long this morning. I want to talk about connected to God's saving power. Connected to God's saving power. You may be seated. Um, the grass wither and the flower fades, but the word of God stands forever. Let me pray. Eternal and most gracious God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, God, for this worship. We thank you for this church. We thank you for these members. God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit who is present with us. For the Bible claims and teach us, Father God, that if two or three would be gathered in your name, we certainly would find you in the midst of the prayer. And God, we thank you for being in the midst of this prayer. Now we ask that your anointing would fall upon this place. God, we ask that your word that go forward would not fall upon deaf ears. And God, if there happen to be someone here, Father God, who is encouraged through your word, but have never made a decision, Father God, to make you their personal Lord and Savior, we pray through the preach word that would be done. But for those, God, who already have a saved life and a saved relationship and a right relationship with you, we pray that this word would just encourage them. So God, again, thank you and thank you for this opportunity and thank you for this church. This is my prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. When we are connected to God, uh, when we look at uh, this particular text, um, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Uh, but unto us who are saved, it is the power of God. And I want to just focus on that because I want to focus on that conjunction, uh, that little one word, but, which is a good word because that word, but, gives us much hope. Um, that we have in our Savior Christ Jesus. We are connected to God's power and we certainly thank God for his power and there's nothing that our God cannot do. Uh, all things are possible with God and, and so we uh, give God much praise for that but when we are connected I consider that to be uh, a good connection. Uh, it definitely lets others know that we are connected to a much higher power. Uh, that higher power source is our Savior, Jesus Christ. And when you're connected to such power, all things and anything is possible. You know, I was sharing with the church once, I said, you can have a radio uh, in your church or in your presence or in your hand, and that radio has many stations, both AM and FM, and it can reach many towers. Uh, that particular radio has many frequencies running through the particular radio. But it can do nothing until it's hooked up to some power. Um, all of those things that you basically hear come from that radio is already programmed in the radio. All, is, all absent is the power source. And I look at us as being those who have been connected to Christ. He's our power source. Without him, we set just like a radio that's never been plugged in. But with him, we can produce much power. And I thank God that when we are, are, are born again Christians, we find such a connection to God that gives us the pleasure to produce power, and that power comes from God. We are powerless without him, but we are powerful with him. How many of you agree with that? Uh, we are just, uh, we are blessing. Have you guys ever seen the, um, the Energizer uh, battery commercial on television and the guy had just say the little bunny just keep going he beats his drum and he goes all through different valleys and different countries and down the highway he goes across desert and over mountains and lonely highways and he just beating and beating and nothing seems to stop um, the little bunny but now I want you to understand that the point of the commercial is not the bunny himself the point of the commercial is the, is the battery, the energizer, 
And what they're saying in that commercial that that Energizer battery keeps this bunny going and going and going. And it is important, church, to have good batteries because weak batteries cause problems. Um, if you have a weak battery, it can, it, can, um, it can produce a problem that normally wouldn't be there. Once the motor starts in a car, uh, you get in your car to crank your car, you got a good strong battery, your, battery, your car cranks up, um, and it, it, it produces that kind of power. Um, there was a story once of a young lady gets in her car to crank her car, and when she gets in her car, she just kept hearing the click sound, click, 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 and she immediately assumed she had a bad battery. And so she sent her son down to the AutoZone store to get a brand new battery. He brings the new battery, he hooks it up in his mom's car, she gets out, she turns the switch, and she still get the click, click, click. And so she asked for the expert to come and check her car. She said, I, 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 play, I replaced the battery, but I'm still getting the clicks. And so when he goes in, he raises the hood, and immediately he sees the problem. He says, you have a good battery, but you have bad connections. And so he's he seen the corrosion on her cable. And so church, I think sometime as Christian, we're just like that. We are good batteries, but sometimes we can have real bad connections. And I think sometimes we have to get rid of the corrosions that, that, that keeps us from having that, that, that good relationship, that great connection with our uh, Savior, Jesus Christ. And so when we look at being connected the right way as Paul write this first letter to the church of Corinth he began to talk about a couple of things that was very important and he wanted the church of Corinth to know that in order to go forward and continue to move forward you need to know this very important thing here and at that 18 verse he says now for the preaching of the cross and we, uh, we love the preaching of the cross. We know what the preaching of the cross does. The preaching of the cross is the reason why many of us are sitting in this sanctuary this morning. Because somebody preached the cross to you. Someone preached Jesus crucified. And, and Paul, Paul writes this letter to Corinth. Paul says, look, we know for the preaching of the cross to those who don't know Jesus is foolish. He says, but those of us who know him and those of us who love him, it's God's wisdom. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. And Paul wants us to know those things. I see about four things that jumps out at me when I see this particular text. Uh, the first thing I see is that the cross of Christ represents the power of God unto salvation. It also represents the power for every believer to live in the spirit. But like the battery, we must have clear contact to keep the power flowing. We must be in harmony with all the will of God's benefits and the power that is available to us. And I thank God that we have that wonder working power, that power that keeps us going day after day, that same power that when we lay down at night, it calls us to rise in the morning, the power of God I'm speaking of. And, 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 and when we look at it, it's of little or no value of, of, uh, at all to have the power of the Almighty God at our disposal and let our connections get rusted. So we must have to, we must know that it is required of me as a child of God to keep my communication with God going and flowing at all times. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that we ought to pray without ceasing. Prayer not only changed things, but prayer fixed things. And, and I heard our youth pastor, uh, pastor this morning was talking about the young guy who came to a place in his life, and we certainly pray for that family. We ask God blessings to be upon that family, to comfort that family, to give them strength in such a dark hour. But he mentioned that the young man took his own life or jumped over to uh, take his life. And it's just, um, when you hear things like that, it, it burdens us as Christians. It saddens our heart to realize that someone couldn't catch this young man before he made such a decision. That um, no one was available to him or he didn't feel he can reach out to someone, to speak to someone, or talk to someone that may have encouraged him, or gave him a hug, or 
showed him some love and let him know that only the enemy, only the devil would get in his mind and tell him that life is not worth living because those of us who live for Christ, we know that life is worth living. And so I just, I just hate that nobody was able to reach him before he got to the point to say that he no longer wants to be in this world. But, but, but when we have a connection with God, we take that for example. Those of us who have a connection with God, we may go through some trials and tribulations. Well, let me retract that. We will go through trials and tribulations. We will have rough times in life. We'll have valleys and we'll have peaks, mountain peaks. Uh, but because we have God, when we go through the valley, as David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, David said, I will fear no evil. And David was confident in saying that because David had a connection with God that, knew, that, that, that gave him the, 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 the spirit of confidence to know that I may walk through this valley, but I have someone who's carrying me through. And David knew that, and he spoke it in confidence. Notice how David even begins with Psalms 23. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. And, and you know, I say to the church all the time, I said, I like what David says here because David makes it personal with God. He realized that not everyone may have called the Lord to be their shepherd. But David said, I'm, I can't speak for you and I can't speak for the crowd. But one thing I do know, the Lord is my shepherd. And then he says, I shall not want. And so David had such a connection with God that he knew God would supply all of his needs. God would take care of him in the deepest of his valley. And he says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Church, that's a good connection. That's a good place to be with God. When we know that in spite of what goes on in our life, God has our back. And so um, we as Christians, we need to keep a clear and uninterrupted connection with God. Yes, others might think that we're foolish for doing so. We may have friends, we may even have relatives may question our relationship with God. But that's okay. Because we know who our personal Savior is. And so when they question, why do why they feel like they have to go to church every Sunday? Why do they feel the need to pray about everything? You know how they feel about us. You may ask, uh, someone may ask you something or say something to you, and your response may be, let me pray about it. Uh, let me have time to pray about it. And you probably have folks saying, why every time I ask brother so-and-so something, he say, let me pray about it. And all you're doing, you're looking for the direction of God. It's your relationship, it's your connection to God that lets you know, hey, you know, I can't just guarantee this because in life there are no guarantees, but with God, it can be. And so let me just pray about it. Let me make sure that God gives me the clearance on this that we may move forward. And so that connection causes you to always pray unto the God that we serve. And so our text, Paul writes to this church, he talks about the wisdom of preaching, the truth of the cross. And he explained to those who are saved to recognize the cross as a symbol of the power of God. But to those outside the faith, the church seems to be involved in foolishness. And, and it's a shame that, that people see it that way. Um, but God know that we would run across people that way. What is the foolishness of which people speak? Well, Maybe it can be the command that God gives us to love our enemies. To some, that may be foolish. To those of us who are in the body of Christ, we know that is the right thing to do. Maybe it's the belief, the hope for, uh, that we will all come together and all be together and all have preparations to be in heaven when we leave this place. To some, that may be foolish. But to those of us who love the Lord, we know that's what Christ has done. He died for us. He's our savior. He's our personal savior. You know, here's, here's where I'm at with that. This is what I always teach the church. I said, earth is preparation for us. Um, we prepare here to go there. 
And we can't go there without preparing here. Let me give you this. In John chapter 14, verse 1, um, Jesus began to talk to the disciples. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. Now watch this. At this particular time, and I'm sure Pastor Jason probably covers this quite a bit, but at this particular time, Jesus is on earth with the disciples but getting ready to go take his place at the right hand of God. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. Now, which suggests to us that earth is not prepared for us. He says, I got to go and prepare a place. He says, but where I am, there you may be also. Now, I like that part. Jesus says, I'm going, but I'm preparing this place for you. Now, watch this. He says that, he, he, Jesus says, he says, in my father's house are many mansions. And, and, and here's the great news about this. He says, if it was not so, I would have told you. So Jesus says, there's plenty room in my father's house. There's a place for you and I in my father's house. Watch, there, there, there's, in, in other words, there will be no certain colors. There will be no uh, just Baptist or Catholic or Methodist or Independent Baptist or uh, 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 Church of God or Church of God in Christ. All of us will be together in the father's house. For those of us who believe in Jesus Christ, we all will be in the Father's house to get God. That when it comes to him, that's why God says, I am spirit. And those who worship me must do it in spirit and in truth. And so we thank God for the spirit of God. And we thank God for the connection we have with God. That when Jesus come back to get us, we should be prepared to go to the prepared place. Let me give you something to ponder. He cannot come back and get an unprepared people and take them over to a prepared place. Why, Pastor Kaya? Because the, the prepared place would then become unprepared because he just took a whole unprepared people now to a prepared place. So preparation is here. Well, what my preparation look like? Being connected to Jesus. That's what my preparation looked like. Accepting Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. Trusting God while I'm on this Christian journey. Knowing he's going to lead me in all the right places. Yes, yeah, some things may not feel good. Some things may not seem good. But I trust the one who's leading me. And so we thank God that we come to a place of that. And so... Note our text says, for the preaching of the cross is to them perish foolish. Romans 10 and 14 reminds us that the first step to releasing the power of God is by the hearing of the word of God. Did not the Bible say it's faith? Coming by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. I had a young man come up to me and say, Pastor, he said, man, I think I'm doing good. He says, but I just want more faith. And I said, brother, you just need to hear more of the word of God. There's nothing I can do to give you more faith but tell you that you need to be around God's word. Because the Bible says, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So that means as much as I'm around the word and hearing God's word go forward, the stronger my faith is ignited in my God. And so I need to be in a place where I can hear the word of God. That is staying connected. And so when you look at the connection, it comes that way. Paul wrote his letter to Colossians in chapter 2, verse 14. He says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, Christ took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And when Paul preached about Christ and his crucifixion, the Jews considered it a stumbling block. The Greeks said that it was foolish. But I stopped by to tell you this morning, those who perish are those who reject the power of the cross. They heard the story, but they refused to accept the truth. They view preaching as a waste of time, foolishness, and they will perish. But to those of us who are called both Jews and Greek 
Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. Those of us who believe know that the foot of the cross, we find the ability of our strength and our power. Preaching brings us to the foot of the cross. Teaching takes us past that. You think about it. If a young man or young woman come and give their life to cross Christ, they're at the foot of the cross. But what do I do from here now? I've accepted Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. I'm at the foot of the cross. Where do I go from here? And that's where good teaching come from. That's where good Bible study come from. That's where good Sunday school come from. Teaching me how to have a personal, intimate relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Knowing that grandma prayers alone can't get me to heaven. The preacher preaching the word of God alone can't get me to heaven. The choir can't sing me to heaven. But once I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, that is my guarantee to heaven. And so we have to come to that place where we make that kind of connection with that kind of God. And so we thank God that we can make that type of connection. So what am I saying? I'm saying that too many God's created people who are depending on their own skills and education to get them through life. Educational skills is necessary. And I wish that everyone would get their degree from their college of their choice. But when trouble comes, that battery is too small for the job. When you really need real power, it be, it's better to be hooked up to the real power than to be hooked up to just your education alone. And so we live in a world sometime where those things mean something to people. Let me get you out of here. I make these last three, two choices, uh, two points extremely short. The second point I want to point out in this is that in order to get the needed energy for your power, you must have the right connection. You can have a good battery, but if the connection is wrong, there's no power. And since we're talking about connecting to a power source, we must be determined the type of connecting is required. And so we know that we need to be connected to God. There's just no way you can live as a Christian without having a God-fearing connection. There are two types of currents in, the, in a battery. You have the AC and the DC. Some folk in our church are the AC in nature. They suffer from being hooked up to the alternating current. They have alternating Sundays when they come. They have alternating prayers when they pray. And they have alternating times when they give. And so, <laughs> so those are the AC Christians. And, 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 and God don't need the AC Christians because they, they operate on an alternating lifestyle. But he's looking for that DC Christian. He's looking for that one who has direct current to him. They directly hooked up to Jesus. They are dedicated and committed to Christ Jesus. They are faithful to the walk and they know Jesus for themselves. They have direct contact with God. They pray. They have a strong prayer life. They can encourage others. And God know he can count on them. And saints, I want to tell you this morning, God is always looking for people he can count on. I've been told First Baptist Mohawk, you can't send God no place. I told the deacon, shut the prayer down when you're getting up saying, God, go to St. Francis Hospital and go to Hillcrest and go to St. John. You can't send God no place. God is looking for you. He needs your feet and your hand and your mouthpiece. And when you get there, because he's already there, he just wants you to go and be there. So when you go to St. Francis, God already there. But he just needs the feet to get there. And so we are his people and we are led by him. Amen? So we have to trust God and how God leads us. But that power you have to have with God. The, th the, the third thing is, Paul said it best here. He says, nothing should separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So when it comes to the life of Christian, there must be no space that separates us from the master. The life of a Christian must be lived in such a way that there is nothing between our soul and our Savior. Takes me right back to the corrosion. That's the only thing can separate you 
from the power source is if you don't have the right connection or you have a weak connection and that when corrode your connection with God well pastor what corrodes my connection what does that corrosion look like pride is one you can be have too much pride about yourself and that's a small bit of corrosion in your connection you know you have to always know that it ain't what I've done it's what God done through me and so when we start taking credit of what we've done we're leaving God out of the whole equation. You run into folks sometime and they'd be like, well, you know, if it wasn't for me, he wouldn't have this. If it wasn't for me, she wouldn't be what she is. If it wasn't for me, you know, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. You're on an island all by yourself. Where's God? So the, 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 the wording should go like this. Had it not been for God who blessed me to be in a position to bless you, then the blessing wouldn't have take place. So God has to get his credit and not you. God has to be the one out front and not you. I just want to be behind. Long as God is doing what he does, I'm just glad to be a vessel he can use. Do I have a witness here? It's not about me. Come on, tell your neighbor. Neighbor, it's not about me. It's about God. So you don't want things to have corrosion going on the fourth and final things, make sure that both cables are connected. As I get ready to take my seat, when we look at this particular passage, and if we compare it to being connected to the power source, you need both the negative and the, power, uh, and, the, and, the and the positive. And I realize in this life, we are faced with just as much negative than we are with positive. But it requires both the negative pole and the positive pole to get the engine started. That means Jesus said we will always be around these people. The, the hunger will always be here. The needy will always be here. So when we look at this particular closing here, we shouldn't be so concerned about the negative and the positive. Because we realize it takes both to get going. And so the negative folks, the naysayers, that's okay. Because you got the positive folks who know where you're going, who you pray to, and who's your God. And when you are fixed on God, you know how to move with both negative and power. There'll be folks going to lie on you. Folk will tell, say things about you that's not true. Folk would just try to scandalize your name. But just know Jesus said, hey, what, here's what Jesus said if I paraphrase this. He says, if they do it for my sake, God bless you. And so when we think about Christ, all of the negative things that he had to endure, all of the nasty things that he had to go through on his way to the cross, at any given time, Christ could have gave up. But I thank God that he never lost vision of why he came to this earth. And so I give God praise for being the God he is and the God he remains. And so the other thing with that is that it takes that ground cable. You have to be grounded. Um, you have to know that I'm grounded in my Savior. I want to close on these verses. We read verse 18, but I want to close on these. Verse 19 of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the dispute this world? Had not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. That's us. That's us, church. For the Jews required a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. He says, but we, we preach Christ, crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them 
which are called both Jews and Greeks of Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God because this foolishness of God is wiser than man and the weakness of God is stronger than man and church I find out when we are weak God is strong and I thank God that through the foolishness of preaching a country boy like myself was saved back in Louisiana just through the foolishness of God's preaching and then if I look around in this church I want to believe in my heart that not only that foolishness saved Emmanuel Kaya but that foolishness saved all of you who are sitting in here this morning because you heard God's word go forward and you say I believe in the good thing about it church we didn't walk with Jesus we didn't see the miracles that Jesus performed when he was here 2,000 years ago we didn't, we didn't camp out with Jesus but we believe by faith and we're sitting in this place this morning because we have a faith that's unmovable and unshakable can't nobody tell us anything different about our Savior we know he went to the cross 2,000 years ago we know he bled on the cross 2,000 years ago the Bible says the record teach us that they took Jesus up a hill called Golgotha they nailed him to an old rugged cross they put him in a borrowed tomb laid him in a cold grave but the Bible says early on Sunday morning good God on Zion said Jesus got up with all power in his hand and today that same power is available and present give God a hand praise what's power God serve it's good to be connected to the power source and if you happen to be here this morning and you have not been introduced or you have no connection to the power source today is a mighty good day if you're not saved today is a good day to get salvation I wouldn't leave here today unsaved you see the signs of the time at any given time heaven gonna crack the sky open and Jesus is coming back and I believe some of us if not all of us sitting in this sanctuary this is how close I believe the time is that you and I will witness him coming. The Bible says he went away on the, cro on the cloud. I know folks saying, I think September the 22nd or something was supposed to be some big day and Jesus was supposed to return. I didn't budge. I didn't blank an eye. Because the Bible I read says no man know the hour of the time of Jesus' return. But he said he'll come like a thief in the night. The very moment you does not expect him to come will be the moment he shows up. And that's why it's good to stay prepared and ready for Christ's return. Would you bow your head? As we give this invitation to discipleship this morning, if you are here this morning, and you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior would you come this morning would you come and fix that would you step out on faith and say I want to be saved the Bible says you need to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ, Christ died on the cross for your sins you can fix that this morning the doors of the church is open will there be one to come to Jesus will it be just one there may be someone here this morning under the sound of my voice you already saved but you you know you can admit there's some corrosion in your connection that you're not doing the things you should be doing you're not living how you should be living there is some slight corrosion in your connection with God and you realize that it's, it's keeping you from having a powerful connection you should have if that's you this morning would you come let me pray with you if you feel your corrosion your, your cables are weak corrosion is there would you come he's available God is available Jesus wants to meet you at your need he wants to bless you 
He wants to take care of you. If you're sick in your body, I want to encourage you this morning. He's a healer. He didn't stop healing 2,000 years ago. He's healing right now. Oh, he's a healer, church. I have four cancer survivors in my church. We went to the Lord in prayer. We prayed. We trust God by faith. And all four of them will live and tell you right now, had it not been for God, Doctors had given up, but God spared their lives. If you're missing that kind of connection with God, would you come? He's a miracle worker. I've seen him do it time and time again. What a good God we serve. What a powerful God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. And although none has come, let me just share with you this morning there's still plenty room at the cross amen